talk to me. I open the page, they talk to me. Come on now, brew walk for me. Urban Gorilla, that sauce on me. He always shot at the yeah. cross on me. He the boss man, he got up on that cross for me. He the boss man, he got up on that cross for me. He the boss man, he got up on that cross. Yeah, yeah. They talk to me. Come on now, brew walk for me. Urban Gorilla, that sauce on me. Yeah, I was shot, pay the cost on me. He the boss, man, he got to play cross. They have a lady trying to force her son to be a transgender at the age seven to spite the father, bro. That's wickedness. That's maximum wickedness, bro. You give me, you give me uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. This place is Sodom. This place is Egypt. This place is Babylon, man. A home of captivity for us and a home of sex of uh immoral acts and homosexuality here, man. Go ahead. The book of Revelations, chapter 11 and verse 8. Yeah. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, yeah. which spiritually is called Sodom and Sodom in, in Egypt. Sodom and Egypt, man. This place is Sodom and Egypt. Homos where do you see homosexual homosexuality running as rapid as it is in America, man? They, they'll call you a, it's, it's about to be a hate crime to call somebody a specific gender, man. Right. Like, we're on the cusp of that, even in Texas, bro. And Egypt, look look at this place, bro. Just getting put on probation here is another is another captivity. It's a captivity of part of captivity, man. I know brothers who can attest to that, bro. It's a captivity of part of captivity. Is that it? That's it on that, right? Malachi. This book of uh, Malachi. Verse four, verse four, whereas Edom said, "We are impoverished, but we will, we will." And who said? Edom. Edom, the so-called white man, said, "We are impoverished, but we will return and build the destined places." Thus said the Lord of hosts, "They shall build, but I will throw down." They are going to build, but the Most High God's going to throw it down, just like He said in Jeremiah. They shall call them the border of wickedness what the border of wickedness the border of wickedness the beginning and end of wickedness man wherever the so-called white man goes he pollutes it he corrupts it he, he brings terrible doctrines to it and they'll pervert the doctrines you already have and so now you have to love us here you are going around enslaving the entire world then you then you got everything you could have possibly wanted set your children up and say oh now nobody can have slaves man just per and, and you want to, on top of that, you want to use our book, our heritage against us, man, to be complacent and being happy slaves in America. That's why I can't wait till y'all get thrown down. I can't wait till y'all get destroyed. I can't wait till y'all go into captivity, bro. And all praises for it. All praises. Cause I hate, I hate just seeing y'all every single day. Right. I hate seeing y'all happy. You know what? You know what? You know what gave me like a lot of joy? I was having a terrible day. This, this is what gave me joy, right? That tornado that came, that tornado came and just landed on all these Edomite houses, bro. Specifically, specifically Edomite houses. And I drove by there and I saw my side like this, like. All <laughs> praises, bro. That's a glimpse. That's a glimpse to the destruction that's gonna happen to America, man. All praises for it. I'm glad that's really, that's really us getting a little bit of recompense for the evil that y'all been doing to us in Dallas and in Fort Worth, man. The most I gonna destroy y'all's habitation, bro. It's great. I'll preach this for it. And then, and then y'all have the nerve to try to sue. Y'all was trying to y'all trying to sue the uh, the news companies trying to say uh, y'all didn't warn us accurately. That's crazy, man. Let, let that happen to Jake's hood. Y'all wouldn't even give that the time of day, man, at all. So go, go back to what I go back to Matthew five real fast. Because with the so-called white man, this really. This breakdown y'all have of Matthew 5, where it says the love of your enemies comes from the so-called white man. Because it's opposite of what the law teaches. It's opposite of what really what the whole Bible teaches, which has been evidently proven so far. You give me Le Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 5 and verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor. You heard that you shall love your neighbor. Let's go to where we heard it, bro. The book of Leviticus. Chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Do what? Bear any grudge against the children of thy people. We shall not bear any grudge against the children of our people. We're supposed to love our people specifically, man. Preferring one another. Read that part again. 
bear, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. We shouldn't bear any grudge against the children of, of our people, man. We're not supposed to hate our brother in our hearts. But y'all do that all the time. Let, let, any, let a so-called white man do anything to your to your people. Oh, we gotta love him. They're our enemies. But let, let Jake let Jake just like brush up against your shoe a little bit. You ready to kill a nigga, man. But y'all supposed to be the Christians. Y'all supposed to be y'all supposed to be the one telling us that we're wrong in the comment section, bro. But y'all are coons. Y'all are just y'all, that's what it boils down to. You're just coons, and I see why the ancient Sakari had to get rid of y'all niggas, bro. That's right. I see why. It's 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 we needed that, bro. And everybody wants to say, oh, why y'all call y'all so Sakari? They're murderers. Y'all niggas gotta go, bro. You have to go. Because you're just as bad. Go ahead. But thou shall love. Actually, actually, Slack, Slack, give me uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Because even in the New Testament, it's the same exact thing. Nothing changed. Your brother is your neighbor. And who is your neighbor? Your fellow Israelite men. You look into the Hebrews, they're countrymen, your kinsmen, somebody you descend from, or who you're a relative to. Go ahead. The book of Romans. Chapter 12 and verse 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Do what? Be kindly affectionate one to another. One to another. With brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Do what? With honor, in honor, preferring one another. We're supposed to prefer, uh, uh, prefer one another, man. We're supposed to prefer our people over these other nations, man. We're not supposed to, we're not supposed to be just taking heed to what the, what the so-called white man says. That's why we look at them as friends. Which reset? Okay, come, come, come. We're supposed to prefer our people, man. It's the same thing, just like how the Old Testament says, and just like how the New Testament says. Get your precept. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, from the top. Let brotherly love continue. What? Let brotherly love continue. Brotherly love continue. Who's your brother? Like it said in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17, man. Your neighbor, who is your neighbor, your kinsman, your fellow countrymen, somebody you, you, you descend from, or your relatives, your people. Now go back. Huh. Start at uh, verse 44, Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Love your enemies. Who's your enemy? Give me, give me uh, uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse 4. Let's see who your enemy is. Let's see exactly who your enemy is. Let's break this down contextually, bro. Because Christians like to say we rip verses out of context. Let's break things down contextually, bro. The book of Exodus, chapter 23 and verse 4. If thou meet thy enemy's ox, thy enemy's ox, or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Now what is that teaching you right there, man? That's teaching you the same thing Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17 says. Because he said, if you see your enemy, somebody you specifically hate or you have a problem with, in, in context of your brother, you have to go and help him out. Because why? Why wouldn't you help him out? Because you have a grudge. That's what it's going, it's teaching you the same exact thing Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17 is. You're not supposed to hold any grudges, man. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to hold that grudge in your head and think like, no, I'm not helping that nigga. I don't care if he's my people, I'm not gonna help that nigga. No, you have to help him. Because that's what the, that's what showing love to your brother is, man. I have problems with a lot of people. And I will, and if they're my people, I'm going to help them, bro. Because that's what Christ taught. That's what Mashiach taught. That's what Yahweh Shai taught, man. Hey brother, you got two seconds here about the word of God, man? Of course not, man. Our older generation has failed us. Yet again, man. Yet again. Can I sit on that? Go back. God, so, uh, Matthew 5 and 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So do good to them who hate you. Those who have a problem with you, still help them out, man. Of your people, in context of what he's saying. Because he said you've heard of old time, that's in reference to the law, statutes, and commandments. Specifically, into this verse, which was, which was, uh, which was uh, Exodus chapter 23, and Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17, about not holding grudges against your neighbors. And be, 
if he has an issue, if he has an issue with you, you still have to help him out. You still have to love him and do your best. That doesn't mean hug your damn oppressor, bro. Contextually, it doesn't. And matter of fact, who was there when he was saying this? It was Israelites. He was talking to Israelites, man. So if, he's, if that's supposed to be to everybody, why wasn't everybody there? Because Christ was in multiple situations. Christ was in multiple situations where multiple nationalities were present when he was teaching. So who was there? This was the Sermon on the Mount. Israelites was there, bro. And he was teaching them to love their neighbor, to love their fellow man, their countrymen, their kinsmen. That's what he was teaching. That's what that whole two verses is talking about in Matthew. Man. That's not talking about anything else, bro. But bring back out, bring back out Jeremiah 4 verse 14. You give me uh, Hosea 4 6. That's the issue with our people, bro. Since we reject knowledge, since we go to these church houses that tell us to, to not keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and to tell us to just be basically be lawless. To tell us to be lawless, we don't have any knowledge, so we believe in whatever they, whatever uh, plantation Christianity they have, and we continue to be destroyed because of it. Bro. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4 and verse 13. O Jerusalem, watch thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall ye... Oh man, that's not what I wanted, but that's good. O Jerusalem, watch thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. That's one thing we need to do, bro. We need to wash our heart from wickedness. What is our heart that's going into our mind? We have to wash our mind of the filth of this germ of this called Christianity, bro. So that we can be saved. So we actually can fulfill what the scriptures say. So we can actually uh, take heed to these law, such commandments, and have the faith, and Christ, and, uh, and then the, the elect will be sealed so Christ can come back and judge these nations, man. We need that. Because that's the only way we're going to be saved. That's it, man. Go ahead. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge deep? And what's a, a vain thought? We shall hug the same person who's been murdering us forever. That's a vain thought. How long are we going to... What the heck is going on right here, man? Oh, my God, man. Come on, bro. The white man such a... He just did that. He just did that, bro. I hate, I hate the so-called white man. That's right. I hate him. I hate his wife. I hate his mom. I hate his family. I hate his nation, bro. They just gotta die. You just have to die, bro. I ain't gonna lie, in all my years, bro. That's, I ain't never seen that, bro. That's just so, that's so goddamn disrespectful, man. It's so damn disrespectful, bro. I just, I just, I can't, bro. I can't even formulate a, it makes me so mad that I can't even formulate my thoughts, bro. And it's funny when something like that happens. We'll say like, hey, well, y'all gonna do something about this? And we'll just start whistling and walk away, man. It's happened to us multiple times. Multiple times. But when somebody tries to come and press themselves up against us and try to have, and try to uh, cause some commotion with us, now the cops gotta run over here and do something. They gotta talk to us, they ain't gonna talk to nobody else, man. That's what happens to us. That's the, that's the plight of being, give me, a, I already proved my point. Give me Amos 8 verse 11. Give me Amos 8 verse 11, bro. It's gonna come a time when we're not out here. It's gonna come a time when y'all don't gotta worry about oppressing us anymore. You don't gotta worry about stopping the stopping the uh, word of God so you can teach. I mean, not teach, so you can have your wedding. You don't have to worry about that. We're not gonna be out here. But what's gonna happen? Calamities, bro. Right. Massive calamities, destruction, nukes, famines that's gonna happen to this place, bro. And then that, then y'all are gonna be wondering where we are because we've been prophesying this for decades, man. This truth has been out for decades, and y'all silly niggas don't want to don't want to take heed to it. Man. So it's gonna come a time to where y'all gonna look for us, and we're not gonna be here. This Amos eight and eleven. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst of, for water. So there's gonna be a famine, not of bread or water, talking about food and substance, but what? But of hearing the words of the Lord. And, and, but of hearing the words of what? Of the Lord. Of hearing the words of the Lord, man. It's gonna come a time till we're not out here, Jake. It's gonna come a time to where you, give me, give me uh, Daniel 12 from the top. It's gonna come a time where y'all have Jacob's trouble, when y'all gonna get massive insurrections, people are gonna get pulled out of their houses, people are gonna get beheaded, Stuff is just gonna be happening. And it, it's gonna be everything we prophesied out of these scriptures. Everything. And y'all gonna call it into mind and be like, damn, where are those Israelites at? Where's Sakari at, man? 
They've been out here forever, and I, I walked past them when I was a nigga to them, but everything they said was true. But now, and now, when stuff's gonna, when stuff is happening to y'all niggas, when y'all finally get that ass whooping like the Most High God promised will happen to y'all because y'all wicked, then y'all gonna be looking for us, man.